Hello, ladies and gents. This is Schwim with another how-to video, this time concerning installing the uh, latest uh, SESX pack for 5M. Um, it's a uh, simple ESX install, uh, including all of the core resources that you would expect on an ESX server. So it's got, uh, this particular pack has everything from the 5M resources to core essential mode ESX resources and the uh, underlying necessities like uh, async, MySQL async instance, things like that. And then pretty much all of the related resources that you would get off of the official ESX uh, GitHub, like police job, ambulance job, shops, things like that. So if you go to the ESX GitHub and, and just scroll through the repositories, probably 80-90% of what's there is included in this. The rest I've left up to uh, whoever installs this to choose what else they want. The only other things I've added so far in this uh, install is GC phone and the ESX tie-ins as well as a loading screen. So what we're going to go through here is from start to finish you go from nothing to a fully running ESX server. So this pack does include the 5M resources and everything after that. What it does not include are the artifacts, simply because you can't share artifacts. Uh, Windows, Linux, they get updated really often, uh, and it's just an unnecessary uh, inclusion. You you just go grab them, download them, uh, drop them into a folder, and you're done. So we're going to go through that process as well. Uh, we're going to start out with absolutely nothing and end up with a server that you can log into. How you do some of the steps is going to be dependent on your operating system and how you're hosting the server, whether it's uh, locally on your home machine, your home hosting, or a VPS or dedicated, or you've got Zap, but you want to install your own resources. This, this is all going to uh, be somewhat different depending on your setup. I'm going to try to do it in the manner that I think most people would be installing their resources. So instead of showing you how to work in the terminal, I'll probably just go through and uh, show you how to do it uh, in a visual kind of GUI setup. So I'll, I'll try to explain the uh, terminal alternatives and stuff as I go in case you're working on a uh, Linux machine and you need to do it through uh, the CLI. So let's get started. Um, the first step is getting everything you need. So I'm hosting the download on the Discord channel. You can get the links to it either in the uh, SESX Discord or the uh, SESX website or GitHub. All the links, though, will be the latest archive available on the Discord app. And there's a few reasons why I'm not uh, offering this on the GitHub page itself or in another manner. But basically, uh, Discord download is the hardest to fail. So uh, DOS attack, uh, copyright takedown notice, none of that shit really 
uh, affects a uh, Discord link, whereas it it can it can bring the whole pack, uh, make it unavailable uh, for a couple people's griefing or uh, nerd raging. So go to s hyphen esx.com, uh, visit the uh, SESX Discord at discord.s-esx.com. Uh, go to the SESX GitHub. You can Google that and end up there. However you get to it, you'll end up with a download link. So we're just going to grab it through here. Um, and... Um, Right at the top of the page, you can uh, simply download the file, and we'll go ahead and open it while we're here and extract that. So what we're going to do is we're going to drop everything into a parent folder, and we'll call this how to, and we'll extract it right here. And... Um, so I've provided everything in a folder titled server data. And that's going to be your uh, server.cfg and your resources and where the cache gets built. But what we're also going to do is we are going to create an artifacts folder. And then we will grab the uh, Linux artifacts, the latest artifacts available. And uh, we'll drop those in as well. So when you download uh, the artifacts, they don't put them in a folder. So you need to make sure that you build the folder you put them in, or you'll end up with this crap strewn everywhere throughout the parent folder. So we went ahead and put them in um, artifacts. But what we're going to do is we are downloading 1818 is the version of the artifacts that we're doing. So what we're going to do is what I like to do with the artifacts is um, create a folder with the version number. And it allows me to switch artifact versions really simply just in the command that's used to start the server. So I dropped mine into the parent folder artifacts 1818 and we'll extract it right there. All right, when we're done with that. We can just close it. We've got our artifacts. Uh, version 1818 we have the server data and uh, the only other thing included in it is license and readme with credits and uh, written install instructions if you need to go back and look at them so we will go into server data and the first thing we're going to do is import the SQL file into our database so Regardless of how you're hosting this, you have to have access to a MySQL database, either on the machine. Remotely doesn't really work because of the response times. You'll get just a cascade of, of uh, high latency issues, and the server will be unusable. As you kind of gain more people, it will become more unusable. So you have to pretty much have a SQL install on the machine that you're hosting 5M on. So whether it's your home host, a VPS or dedicated, or uh, Zap provides one. But uh, I've got some how-to videos on installing uh, MySQL on, on machines, so you can go through my channel and find those. But what I've done is I've created a, a database for the how-to video and when you're importing this SQL file it's super super simple okay so if you go to the import tab on phpMyAdmin or you can there's uh, 
similar import features for however you use whatever app you use to connect to your database whether uh, it's like a locally uh, run application or PHP my admin everything has the ability to import a file so with PHP my admin after you go to the import tab uh, first off make sure you're in the database that you want to import it to so we are in database SESX how to and uh, click browse go to your server data folder that you uh, extracted choose that SQL file and go all right so now we've got the entire database required to run the ESX uh, install it has everything you don't have to go back and install police jobs SQL just this is it one file and you're done and you're ready to move on to the next step okay the next step is editing server config okay <clears throat> there are a few things you have to do in this file none of them are a big deal all of them are fairly simple the first step we'll just go from the top of the file to the bottom I'll explain everything as we go first step is generating or retrieving your steam web API this API uh, key is what allows your server to retrieve steam identifiers which is a necessity for ESX in the past this wasn't required because 5m itself handled this and just magically steam a keys or steam ids were available in game but with some steam changes that's no longer the case so now every person running a server that re that requires steam identifiers has to generate a, a API key and include it in their server config so visit the URL I've posted in the server config go to that page while logged into steam it will it will just allow you to one click create an API key once you've created it go ahead and drop it in right here once you've done that you're going to go down a couple lines to the MySQL connection string and you're going to insert the details that reflect your server so for server localhost localhost just means that your MySQL server is on the same host that you are running the 5m server on so you almost always leave it at localhost there's situations in which you don't like I think zap has uh, different hosts that they run their their MySQL servers on but for the most part you can leave it at localhost if it doesn't work for you that way then you're going to have to deal with your particular install setup to figure out what host you're supposed to use database uh, that I used was the SESX how to user ID for my case is swim and password in my case is Monroe and if you'd like to uh, try to figure out my uh, virtual machine my throwaway virtual machine uh, login so you can get in here and uh, destroy my throwaway databases you're welcome to it everything else can be left the same below that for quite a while um, the only time you have to change this is if you have other 5m servers running on the same machine uh, you'll change this port you'll leave the four zeros that's telling the server to listen on all network interfaces and not just one particular one the only thing you would change was the 3120 you could just go up incrementally 3121 3122 and you can run as many servers as your heart desires and your machine specs will allow the next thing you're going to do is right here and add principal identifier you're going to get your steam id and drop it in there and also 
for any other admins you have running on your server. You just copy and paste this line to add more admin Steam IDs. If you're not able to figure out how to get your Steam ID, all you have to do is set up the server, leave this line alone, set up the rest, start it up. Once you log in, you'll go to the users table and uh, you'll see your Steam ID in your user row in that table. And if I remember, I'll show you what I mean uh, at the towards the end of the video after we've got a, uh, a server running. Once you've done that, you can go all the way past all of the resource starting uh, lines. And we'll explain some of these to you. This line right here, you'll want to leave alone. The script hook allowed. If you allow script hook, uh, it opens uh, it just an immeasurable can of worms for uh, griefers logging into your server and, and screwing with it. Um, you can put your host name to be anything you want, uh, better than his uh, DOJ server, complete with absolutely everything under the sun, join here, um, look at me. That'll be the line that shows up as the server title when people log into 5M. You can change your icon to be any uh, 96 by 96 uh, image PNG file that you want, uh, just create it, drop it into the server data folder, and make sure the name's right here. Um, if you did not want your server to show up in the server list, take out this hashtag and just leave it like that. And that will cause your server not to report itself to 5M and 5M won't show it as an option in the server list. Uh, endpoint privacy, you'll want to leave true unless you have some kind of web panel that requires the IP addresses of your players to be identified uh, and visible in the uh, player's JSON file. License key, you'll go to keymaster.5M.net, generate a license key, and drop it right here. And once you've done all that, you will save the file and you are ready to move on to the next step. And that next step, believe it or not, is starting up the server. So at this point, you've done absolutely everything you needed to do um, and you are ready to crank it up and join it. So what we're going to do is, in my case, uh, we're going to open a terminal window here and I'll show you how to start it on a uh, Linux machine. The Windows version will be exactly the same. The only difference is how you change directories and stuff. So um, You'll either want to uh, look on the 5M forums for a batch file to make this a little simpler, uh, or it's, it's not that hard. The, the two things you need to keep in mind are where your artifacts folder is and making sure you are in the directory where your server.cfg resides when you do this command, and I'll explain why. Um, in just a second. But basically, um, what, what it is, uh, the command uh, is telling the uh, machine to start the artifact, but execute the server.cfg file. And that can only be done if you are running these commands from the folder where server.cfg resides. So we are in server data, and you can see in server data, that's where the server.cfg file is. So what we're gonna do is tell it to go up one folder, and then go into artifacts, 1818, and then we are running, in the Linux case, run.sch. I believe Windows is run.cmd, if I remember correctly. And space, the plus sign, 
EXEC. So we're telling it to add this uh, to the run command. So add execute EXEC server.cfg. Hit enter. Server cranks up. And you are ready to roll. So what I'm going to do in another window is I am going to go ahead and log into 5M and then uh, we will create a user in the database by logging into this server. Um, you can safely ignore the uh, hitch warnings because I'm running a potato of a virtual machine um, and it's uh, it's only running a couple of the cores and bare minimum of the uh, memory. Okay, so you can see I'm connecting uh, in the game client, and as soon as this player is done loading in, then he has created a user table. Uh, in the database and I'll show you how to get your Steam ID and then we'll just wrap this whole thing up. So if you head back over to your database you'll see in your users table now a user that just logged in named Schwim with a Steam ID and that is what you would paste into your server.cfg for the uh, admin ace permissions. And with that, you have a fully running ESX server uh, with all the latest resources, and you are ready to add additional resources to your heart's content. And that's going to wrap it up for this one. If you guys have any questions or comments, uh, outlandish tales of amazement that you want to share with me go ahead and post it to the SESX discord I do not monitor the comments on the YouTube videos I don't visit the 5m forums often enough to check my uh, my private messages or, or forum posts in in any kind of normal routine so if you'll just post it to the SESX Discord channel that I monitor constantly. So I'll be able to get it pretty quickly. And uh, I'll put the link to that down below in the, com or in the uh, description. And with that, uh, I hope you guys have a great time running your server and enjoy it. Have a good one.